Greetings fellow gorehounds and welcome back to another blood splattered vlog. And my 2016 catch up continues with yet another amazing South Korean horror movie. This week's movie, The Wailing, is a very different movie than Train to Busan. It is way more cerebral and dark, whereas Train to Busan was a little more blockbustery, a little more, you know, popcorn entertainment. But The Wailing is way more like a cross between Seven and The Exorcist, but set in a South Korean town with a lot of South Korean traditions that can make it confusing for West Western audiences. That being said, this movie is totally worth a watch even if you don't know anything about South Korea because it's so fucking good. The ending will be really confusing if you don't know anything, so I'll go into that when I get to the spoilers. But yeah, this is a movie about a bumbling cop in a small Korean town who's trying to solve these mysterious murders that seem to be traced to people just completely losing their minds and murdering their families for no apparent reason, but the pattern remains the same with each murder. So the question becomes, why are all these people going crazy? Is something in the water? Is there something supernatural afoot? What is it? And I'll go into what it is when we get to the spoilers, but let's just say the mystery about what's going on is almost worth the price of watching this alone. But even then, you don't even have to pay much to see this movie because it's available currently on North American Netflix. So if you have Netflix, then check it out immediately. But if you don't have Netflix, this is totally worth an Amazon rental, and it's totally worth buying if you want to. Hell, if you're an Asian cinema buff and you haven't seen The Wailing yet, what the fuck are you waiting for? Go. Go fucking watch it. But yeah, outside of the mystery, the other thing I really like about this movie is that it is legitimately creepy and it's got a very just foreboding atmosphere that just seeps into your soul while you're watching it. Like, you can feel your soul out of breath while you're watching this movie. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever, but it's definitely a feeling I got when I was watching it, and I don't even believe in souls. And it's another movie that shows the Koreans actually do care about story and character because it's really well written, there is a lot of characters for you to latch on to, like the main character is basically this bumbling cop who becomes more and more competent as the story goes on, but at the beginning has no idea what he's gotten himself into. And his main redeeming quality is the fact that he legitimately does care about solving this case, and he does care about his family who gets caught in the middle of it. But there's other great characters. There was a character in this movie who was a priest in training who I thought I was not really going to care for or even remember, but as the movie went on, I actually grew to really like him. And there's also a shaman who's called in at one point in this movie, and that character is really great, and where that character goes, I was not expecting. I was expecting one thing, and I got another, and good god was it great. But yeah, unfortunately, because this is a mystery story, and there is things that can absolutely be spoiled, it's hard to go into too many details in the spoiler-free section, so let's just say, The Wailing, I give it a solid recommendation. I still kind of prefer Train to Busan in terms of South Korean horror movies from last year, but this is absolutely worth your time 100%. It is awesome. It is also solidly a 10 out of 10. When it comes to Train to Busan in this movie, it's more of a personal preference thing. Anyway, my fellow gorehounds, check out the movie, and uh, let's move on to the spoilers. <laughs> Now, one of the things I should probably warn you about a little bit about this movie is that it's got some solid Asian racism at the forefront here. Because one of the main suspects in these murders is this Japanese guy who's moved to their town for mysterious reasons, and no one in the town trusts him. They all think that he's working in dark magic and black magic, and that he's cursing the town, and that he's a, he's a shaman, or he's a demon, or he's something. And as the movie goes on, it becomes very clear that some of these rumors aren't entirely untrue. But the movie does a good job of jumping around with whether or not he is at the center of it or whether he's trying to prevent it. Is he a good guy or a bad guy? And that changing loyalty throughout the movie definitely keeps you engaged because just when you think it's going to be one thing, it turns into the other, like, right quick. So despite this movie being quite the sit, it's about two and a half hours long, it doesn't feel that long because you're so engaged with the mystery and the story and trying to piece together what exactly is going on that you don't even notice time has passed. At least I didn't anyway. So you got this cop, who's definitely not one of the top cops in the department, he's kind of a laughing stock to the other cops, as you find out as the movie goes on, who starts to notice this pattern with all these mysterious murders, like there's like these weird, gigantic, like, bird nest circles on most of the properties, there's these weird hanging, like, um 
flower things that have shriveled up on every single crime scene. And every time, it's always a family member who slaughters their own family and then doesn't even remember who they are afterwards. They've just gone completely nuts. They're practically zombies, but without all the brain eating. And so he goes through a whole lot of theories about what's going on. He thinks maybe there's some sort of bad mushrooms that started growing in the area. He thinks that maybe there's some sort of weird cult thing going on. He just keeps going through all these little things until finally he lands on the Japanese guy who becomes the prime suspect. And not surprised Surprisingly, the moment he lands upon this Japanese guy, that's when his daughter starts showing symptoms that the other people showed before they murdered their whole family. So naturally, he's now got a personal investment in this. So he and his cop friend and this priest in training go and basically question this Japanese guy, and it eventually escalates to the point where they're now threatening him, because they're convinced that he's doing something, and he is doing something, but you're not sure what. Meanwhile, you have this girl in white who keeps popping up and giving the Japanese guy this side eye, and also keeps giving giving the cop all these, you know, hints and clues that leads him to the Japanese guy. And at first you're like, okay, clearly the Japanese guy is the good guy and the girl in white is the bad guy. She's the demon, she's doing all this, and she's trying to throw him off his trail. But it's not that simple, and it actually, you know, it actually surprised me the directions this movie took. And eventually, at one point, his daughter just completely goes off the deep end, so he ends up calling in this shaman to perform, essentially, an exorcism on his daughter, while also performing a death curse upon the demon that's doing it to her. And when this happens, the Japanese guy starts falling over like he's being killed by the shaman curse, and then he starts performing his own ritual, and then the daughter starts getting hurt, and then the daughter begs him to stop, so he stops the ritual, and you're like, okay, is the Japanese guy the demon? Is the girl in white the demon? Was the Japanese guy trying to stop the girl in white from getting the girl? What the fuck is going on? I don't know. All I know is I'm at the edge of my seat and I desperately want to know what the fuck is going on in this movie. And as the movie goes on, you're introduced to some actual race from the dead zombies that end up happening. A demon does present itself and oh my god, when it does, that scene is fucking glorious, but a little confusing if you are a westerner like I am. Because it turns out that there's a whole lot of aspects of Korean culture that makes the ending make sense, but if you're a Westerner, you have no way of knowing that. Like for one, one of the important things to know about the ending of this movie is that it is forbidden to take pictures of dead bodies in some parts of Korea because it's considered to steal your soul. So when you see a certain character taking pictures of dead bodies, that's a red flag. Another important thing to know is that a girl in white can either indicate a vengeful spirit a la Japan or indicate a guardian spirit. And that second part is something that I had no way of knowing without looking it up on Reddit. And one of the other things I didn't know going in is that that flower that shriveled up indicates some sort of devil's trap. It's kind of like the equivalent of if you're a Supernatural fan and you see a character like cross salt, you know that that's a ghost trap. The shriveled up flower thing is a devil's trap too, but you wouldn't know that if you didn't live in Korea or grow up with those customs. And even though we're in the spoiler section, I don't want to entirely spoil the twist at the end of this movie, but I just wanted to give you that information so you can go in with a little more knowledge than I did, or at least clear a few things up if you watched the movie and you were just as confused as I was when I first saw it. Needless to say, yes, the demon was the demon the whole time, and the other thing was actually trying to stop it, and that is the twist of the movie, and you will know what I'm talking about when it happens. But yeah, this is a really solid, fantastic movie. It's got great acting, great characters, a solid mystery, a lot of twists and turns, and a lot of things that I didn't even mention that make this movie even more complicated. And there are parts of this movie that get pretty gnarly. Not as gnarly as Train to Busan or Old Boy, but pretty gnarly nonetheless. So yeah, if you like horror movies like Seven or like The Exorcist or combinations in between, then this is definitely a movie for you, especially if if you like Asian culture movies, and this is definitely a South Korean culture horror movie. So yeah, my fellow Gorehounds, if you can tell, I'm going to be doing some more of these catch-up vlogs over the next week or two, possibly two weeks. We shall see, because there's a lot of movies that I missed that are really fucking fantastic, and so far, there's at least two movies I watched that are definitely going on my top ten list, and wouldn't have had I not done this catch-up, so it's important that I did. And with that all said, my fellow Gorehounds, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.